morning. Good morning. We're very excited to be here this morning. We have a lot to tell you guys about. We do. It's been a while. It has been a while. Um, we skipped June. We did have a tentative fiber ferry in June and then with uh, graduations and all kinds of things going on. Um, so yeah, it's been a while. So we're excited to be here with you guys this morning and bring you the Fiber Fairy Friday project of the koala, which is so much fun. And it does have tiny toes, but there's a, there's a, uh, a loophole. <laughs> there's a tiny toe <laughs> loophole. So we're gonna talk about that and, um, and some new products and upcoming, um, upcoming calendar stuff and the plumage, which I'm so excited about and I can't wait to create a project around. And um, the blending boards are in. So if you've been waiting for those, um, we, have, we have them in, we've listed them, but we don't have our, you know, a, a tutorial yet but I do have it here and we can go over some stuff with that and then of course we're going to answer any questions that you guys might have well almost any as long as it's not top secret type <laughs> question um so 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 happy uh to see you guys do you have any tips on how to get things to look realistic yes I mean that's all of our tips. Right? Well, I'm not so like, I'm not super, super realistic. I'm adjusting my playback speed. Wait, is it the playback speed? It's the quality. quality. Um, okay. Put me on low quality. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, realism is like... It's a development of artistic eye and techniques and learning about fiber. So it's really, it's not, there's tons of tips, but it's sort of a process. And if that is your direction and your motivation, then you will get there. It's just like, it's like someone who wants to paint, you know, realistically, like it, you have to develop that. But I would say that the honing your skills of like drawing and interpreting and seeing um, is a huge part of that. And there's tons of tools for that. Like we don't have to be magically talented artists. It's, there's a lot, especially now with all kinds of apps, there's a lot of tools for um, drafting and seeing things relative to each other and proportions and contrast. and. Needle felting is unique. It's kind of in its own world because it's part sculpture, but it's part, we have the color aspect as well. So we're creating a 3D sculpture, but then we're also basically painting it with wool. We're sculpting it with wool and painting it with wool. So any observation, any notes about proportions, I'd say are key because as soon as as soon as the eyes are in the wrong place or the ears are too big or then or the mouth like common thing is this the, the lines of the mouth go too far or aren't in the right place like all of those it things affects, yeah one thing can affect yeah. the look of the whole yeah. piece so i think i feel like in my sculptures i don't aim for super realism i aim for an interpretation of the animal that makes sense to me i guess so uh, what plumage color would you suggest for hummingbird wings? Ooh, actually, so hummingbird wings, well, there's a huge variety. That's first of all. Um, I mean, in general, I feel like in this area, we talk about the ruby throated hummingbird, mm -hmm. I say is the most sort of the standard, but um, they're very gossamer and light and they're sort of just gray, although there's on the back of the shoulder of the wing there's some of the green color or whatever colors on the hummingbird's back and there's I, I sometimes see a little bit of purple in there so it's super open to interpretation but the colors that i just picked out to demonstrate the blending board could be um 
could be a good option. So we'll nice. get to that. And hopefully you can stick around and see that or, or check it out later. Um, Delisa and Sabine are both on. Oh, good, good. Yes, we have Delisa and Sabine to thank for the feather technique. And um, can't wait to see what they make mm -hmm. with the plumage. So let's talk about, um, let's start with the fiber fairy and then we'll go over the plumage and talk a little bit about what it is and how it's used and oh you know what I meant to we have a we have a, can you can you see her <laughs> um we have a puppy in the house lately <laughs> so the fiber fairy today the koala project is very simple in um <laughs> very simple in supplies um, so actually the giveaway is almost everything you need. It is built on a 22 gauge wire armature like the basket bunny or the raccoon. That side, that's the scale I went with. So it's a little, it's a little small, it's, um, but it's a nice size for, and you can actually achieve quite a bit of realism and detail because of how simple the project is. So if you need 22 gauge wire, um, I would put that in your cart and but other than that you probably have on hand or with the fiber fairy you will have what you need so the first tier is this taupe core which we um, got in for the fiber fairy it is it is a a really nice gray that's balanced between cool and warm so it works perfectly and then the second tier is this Maori um, bat from from DHG, and it's just a natural. It's a natural white. It's really beautiful. It's a little longer staple than the than our core, um, but not quite as smooth and silky as um, something like obviously merino or the Corydale whites. And then not quite as white as Serafina white. So it makes a really, I like this color for the white of their belly because it's not super white. <laughs> and so it makes a really nice natural belly color. And then a bit of black core. Of course, we are using that on the nose and you can put it on the fingernails, but that's where the loophole is. And then the third tier is a bundle with 36 inches each of the oatmeal BFL, which is one of my favorite top mm -hmm. coats. It's so beautiful. And then the Shetland Moret, which is a brown. So there's a northern coal. <laughs> She's not going to put that in her bed. <laughs> Make, is she, I'll okay. start. There was a request there a to see the puppy. Toy? There was a request to see the puppy because she photo bombed. So this is her. That is her. She's, 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 she's a lot. Um, I'm going to be tossing her treats. So there's a northern koala and a southern koala. So with these two colors, you can make the, the gray one and the brown one. And let me check my notes because I prepared for this a long time ago. And I'm forgetting my facts. Let me find them. Hmm. People are saying that the koala looks bigger than it does in the newsletter. But I don't know if that's because it's closer. Move forward, yeah. It's it's built, like I said, like the basket bunny. It's it's about six inch or about four or five inches. Yeah. <laughs> um Yeah. Aren't they funny? They're so funny. They're so funny. I guess we could go. Are you on the? Do we have the overhead? Is it? Yeah, let's do the overhead, and I'll show some of the, some of the fibers and stuff. And I'm, I'm just looking for my um. For where I wrote, you know, I usually I make a card like all about them. Because they have a ton of interesting facts. Characters, yeah. Yeah. Characteristics. I yes. Should say. Oh my gosh, they're so funny. They just look like little, little old men. Um, 
Okay, I'll go through these one more time. The, cause now we have the overhead going. We have the taupe um, core is the first tier. It's two ounces, whoops. And then the second tier, and it goes uh, 25, 45, 65. Mm -hmm. The second tier is the Maori. Um, this is actually a bat, but to package it as an ounce, Sassy had to pull the bats down. And these, both of these first two fibers are things that we don't have in stock. They're special for the fiber fairy. And then a little bit of black core. And then the third tier is 36 inches each, which comes out to about an ounce and a half of the um, oatmeal BFL and the Shetland Moret. So, so pretty. So I'll show the koala here. So the only other thing people need would be wire. Wire, and we do have these uh, really fun tri-colored BFL locks. And I use them in the ears because they just add a little bit of funny <laughs> funny texture um not needed but they are a lot of fun and they're they're great for you know um oh my gosh so many things nests mm -hmm. um tipple toppers forest floor gnomes little hedgies little, oh, tiny, like the tiny hedgies. hedgies yeah lee the likes to make the half hedgy lee calls them wee hedgies teeny tiny little hedgies and the tricolor has a, a mix of gray, blonde, brown, and then there might be a little bit of like dark brown or black in there. So fun. Um, 22. 22 gauge, yeah. 22, 22 gauge. gauge. Oh, and then I did use... Um, what does BFL mean, someone asked. Uh, blue face luster is a type of sheep. I did use... So a couple people are asking about how you get the offer or how do they add it to their card or what they have to do. If you place an order and the items in your cart are $65 or more, then you will get all three of the tiers. Um, we print out the orders for today, we check the subtotal on the order, and mark in the corner um, how many levels you'd be getting. So everyone who's packing today knows as they're packing that they put the offer in. So there's no discount code. You don't have to write anything in comments. A lot of people do. Mm -hmm. That's just because nice. they like, say hi. Or, you like know. But um, you don't. You don't have to if you don't. It used to be a while ago that you had to write FFF in the comments, and um, that's not required anymore. So. As long as you place an order today, you would get the tears. What'd you do to your dog? She's so quiet. Um, she is really good waiting. <laughs> She's being bribed. She's, <laughs> I have this as her kind of lunch, it's just her food, but she will sit there for one piece of food for an hour. Um, so. 32 gauge. I did use 32 gauge on the fingers, and I, so we need to bring oh, okay. that up. The 32 gauge black which is 32 new. gauge. Yeah. 32 gauge black. Mm -hmm. And then people are asking about the nose. The nose is the black core. And I have, well, I don't know if you guys can see it. I have the power wax out. I did use that on the nails and the nose. So we will be doing that. Now, when I made these, I wrapped the teeny tiny 32 gauge fingernails. <laughs> and then I thought, why am I doing this? Mm -hmm. If because it's really just making the koala's fingernail. So if you fold that 32 gauge tight and put some power wax on it, that's all you need because it's already black. Mm -hmm. So we can actually skip that step, which makes it a more beginner friendly mm -hmm. level two project because getting these um, teeny tiny nails was not easy. Um. As far as if someone's new to this and they want to do the felt along as long as they have the wires and obviously a felting surface and needles, they will be able to complete the project yeah, it's, with what's it's, in here. It's pretty um, much what's in here. I did 
like I said, I used the locks on the ears, but that's not. You didn't you can on, certainly make them without it. This one doesn't have the locks, right? Oh, he doesn't? No, I don't think so. Can you switch back to overhead? Yeah, this guy doesn't. Sure. Oh, yeah, he's cute. Yeah. <laughs> the, other one, the other one has an attitude. Yeah. <laughs> um, maybe I used uh, some Gen Gen Tan. Okay. To get that little lightning of color. Yeah. Yeah, Jen Jen Tan. So if we were to make a supply pack for this, it would have the core, the off-white, Jen Jen Tan, and then the oatmeal and the Manx, so, and black, so. Um, if you don't have wire in your stash, you would wanna order that. Yeah. So the offer today is the bundle, this bundle right here, this bundle and this bundle so it's the three fibers that yeah. you would get so you might need wire and you might want to try the good chance to try the cold wax medium and um, you might need the 22 gauge wire and 32 gauge wire and gen gen tan I'm yeah. not sure how many of the locks we have but we I have a line to link we do have a lot okay we had over a hundred oh wow that's yeah. awesome so yes. I'm gonna link those locks yes <laughs> You're busy. It's okay. It's good. Look at she's been quiet. I haven't bribed her in a while. I know it is good. Um, any other questions uh, at the moment? I will move on. There were a lot of questions. I'm trying to make sure I saw okay. them all. Why okay. Maori bat instead of Serafina white? The Maori bat is a little bit of a softer color. You could totally use either. We sometimes like to bring in new stuff for mm -hmm. for the fiber fairy and make it a little little extra oh yeah that's when will the green imprimatura be back in stock mm. we need to work on imprimatura um <clears throat> honestly it did not move very quickly and so it wasn't like a, a constant production right. for us and we are constantly needing to reformulate our blends because of shortages so um, I can't say exactly, but I will keep that in mind and as we uh, look at what we need to do next and keep that in mind. It, w it wasn't on my radar. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm sure there's some component of the original. I think there's a component that, that we didn't able have, to get right now. but we should be able to substitute. We're, we're still, you know, making substitution. Mm. Well, some are We're just still new working entries. on yeah. yeah core specifically the the 20 colors of dyed core we're still working on but in the meantime I'm really happy with what mm -hmm. we have so mm -hmm. um, how many koalas can be made with that first tier of core uh, that's a good question let me get a we can get a weight on this I mean this should be about let me see what I wrote down here. It should be about two ounces. Um, before we wrap up, I will get a weight on the koala. And I can do that. Um, I think there's a scale over in yeah. the. Somebody asked how you can area. determine uh, how you determine which wire. On our FAQ page, there's actually a little um, cheap breakdown yeah. which That's gauge cool. wire should I use for my project and um, just based on size and which wire so check out the FAQ page I will link that also yeah that's really about mostly about size um, for little ornaments I would use pipe cleaner or a piece of you know, 22 gauge or 26 gauge wire for something under six inches I like the 22 gauge wire but then over that we have to move to the 14 gauge aluminum wire because the 22 gauge wire is pre-cut at 18 inches, so you're limited. But it makes it works out anyway because if you tried to use the 22 gauge wire on a bigger project, it the wool would override the wire. So it's a balance between the strength of the wire needed and the size of the project, the weight of the wool. Um, and the felting of the wool. I like things to be posable, so I'm always balancing out, you know, can this still move? Um, now, the koala bear is a little bit kind of at the brink of not being able to move so much, 
because you know they're kind of thick mm -hmm. so they don't have a ton of mobility uh do we have the 22 gauge wire we should have all of it i think in so. stock right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah on the wire page um Somebody's asking, my shopping cart that I filled last night was empty this morning. They were logged in, and why was it emptied? It's not supposed to. I don't know if that has to do with the web browser. Oh, um, that's frustrating. Yeah, so people have asked that um, before, and I know some people have put items onto their wish list rather than that might be the shopping cart. Route. Unless you have, like, a ton on your wish list, and there's only specific items you want in your cart, Um that may not be the best option. I don't I don't know if jotting it down. I would love to say that it's just going to be in there waiting for you. I'm not sure when they refresh. Mm -hmm. And now I had asked our customer service about it and if it's an item that ended up selling out, then it would disappear from your cart because it being in your cart doesn't like hold it or take it out of stock. But that shouldn't happen with Yeah, that a I lot. could see how so, that would be frustrating like you so, spend your time Right. Building your cart. Right. <laughs> Curating your cart. So it was happening to one person in particular, um, and she did decide to go ahead and just utilize the wish list rather than the cart, and then just slide those into the cart um, when she was ready to make her purchase. That is a thought. That's good advice. Um, what's the difference between Swax and Power Wax? Could you use the Power Wax or Swax for a beak? Yes. Mm -hmm. um, there is a difference and but at the same time there's a lot of overlap so they can be used in similar ways swax needs to be heated for one um and it has a little bit more stickiness so on larger things or where you really want maybe you're wrapping a wire and you want to put a little swax on the wire and press the wool into it now you can do the same thing with power wax but Swax has more hold on that front. Mm -hmm. In an application, Swax is gonna be a little heavier. So for example, we did the we used power wax on the bat wings. I tried some power wax on some of the feathers as well. And if you were to put do that with Swax, it's not it doesn't it's heavier, it doesn't cover a large area, it would just get all bogged down. So Swax is a little more kind of like a like power in your punch. Um, and Power Wax can go a little farther, lighter, uh, and it doesn't penetrate the wool as much as Swax does. So you can Swax a nose. If you were to put Swax on a nose, you're definitely going to be able to like almost like carve it and shape it and, you know, mm -hmm. it has malleability. Whereas if you put power wax on, it's just sort of going to shine up the top. So now the they, sorry, the power mm -hmm. text medium, not the wax. That is like a hardener. Power text is a like hardener. A it's made by the same company. <clears throat> um, power wax. Let me grab it real quick. It comes if you want to go. Overhead. Yeah, thanks. Um, this is my little busted up one, my dirty, thank you, my dirty busted up ones, <laughs> uh, and well used. Um, it comes like this, and it is like kind of like a paste almost, and what's great about it is it's water-based. You can use it, use your fingers. I use my fingers a lot. I keep a um, I keep a toothpick in here for dabbing it onto onto wire like the little toes, um, but for tiny things like little beaks and fingertips, this is this is great. And I there are times that I would use swax instead of power wax and power wax instead of swax, but that becomes a little bit of a personal preference and just you know getting both mediums, playing around with them, and seeing how you like it and how you would like to use it. Mm. 1.47 ounces. Okay, so... Ounce and a half. Ounce and a half. 
So you figure about an ounce of core wool. So this would make at least two, maybe three. Yeah. Um, and if you sorry. wanted to get more core, you could definitely use off-white chunky core since their belly's white, that would be no problem. Um, you could use gray core. Uh, we have a Payne's gray that could work. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a little discussion about why are, someone's asking, can they double the 32 gauge there in the UK and have a hard time getting why are the 22 mm -hmm. gauge is mm -hmm. always, almost always out of stock. Like I mean, 232 gauge is still going to be sort of floppy mm -hmm. and wimpy. Um, hmm. But yeah, you could try it better than, you know, if you if that's what you need to do to make the project for sure, you could try it. Maybe even three. 32 is pretty. It's really. Fine. It's really fine. Yeah. Um, if you're able to get even like green wrap wire mm -hmm. anything in the 22 gauge yeah if you look for much getting floral covered, wire so. or yeah did were you able to check and see if we had the wires yeah i can look. okay somebody asked for hints on the october fiber fairy Ooh, <laughs> it's a big one and it'll be big in a couple of ways that's all i could say <laughs> I don't, we don't really give, we don't try not to We give don't give away. hints. <laughs> we always give hints. We do give hints. But You'll come out eventually. <laughs> yeah, so on we, Fiber Fair um, Day. October 27th, I think, is the day. And, you know, we try to make it um, with the big one in the spring. This is our big fall one. It will have um, many tiers. It will have, probably have a raffle. Ye we, yeah, yeah, I think I we're think gonna have a raffle. Mm -hmm. Yep, have some ideas <gasps> for that. You do? Mm -hmm. I don't. <laughs> oh, that's exciting. <laughs> yeah. Um, can I swax my daughter's nose? Okay, let's talk a little bit. Anyone just said any new tools in your e store? Yes, let's talk about plumage, mm -hmm. and we will talk about the blending board. So plumage, we were actually approached by DHG to create mm -hmm. this color line. And then um, I went ahead and did it before they were, <laughs> they were ready to do it. But they, they, it was their idea and I had a lot of fun. Oh gosh, it was a big project, but the, the bird inspiration was a lot of fun. And I saw birds that I didn't even know existed. Now, we're both being difficult and expanding our worlds by naming these after birds <laughs> that really are a little confusing and don't have very much to do with the color. <laughs> Obviously, some of them you'll know, like blue heron and, and ruby um, hummingbird. But there's a lot. So if you look up the names and actually look up the birds, it's pretty cool. And there's a lot to see that I didn't even know existed. So let me get these little guys a little uh, scooted over. We have over. plenty of the 22 and 32 gauge wires. Okay, good, awesome. I like it when I uh, coordinate that. And if you wanna put the overhead on Talbot, I'm just gonna pull some of this stuff. Um, so I took the six primary and secondary colors and made three versions of each color, which is 18 colors. We are waiting still on two. We're waiting on the bright yellow and the bright green, which is the rainbow lorikeet, I think. Um, really fun color, like that real bright chartreuse color. Uh, I do have little samples of it. All right, these are the, that's in alphabetical order. Here we go. This will be a nice, this will be a nice visual. All labeled. So, for example, so in the yellow, we're missing the bright yellow. The great, is that the greater bird of paradise? That is the, yes, greater bird of paradise. 
And so I tried to do like a pastel, a vibrant, and a muted of, of each color family. So the Yupupa is an Italian bird. We, that was in honor of, of DHG. And Cock of the Rock, I'm trying to remember what that one looked like. And Mandarin Duck, this is that rich, rusty orange that's, that's on, I think it's on their neck. So in the purple family, lilac Ooh. breasted roller. Ooh, what's that? That's, That's cock of the yeah. rock. Oh my gosh, so wacky, so crazy. Um, Goldian finch and Victoria. Oh, I remember the Victoria crowned pigeon was really pretty. Then we have a uh, blue heron. Resplendent Quetzal. Will you look that one up? Yep. I can't remember that one. Peafowl, which is an intense, um, an intense blue for peacocks. Here, this is. Wow. Look up Resplendent Quetzal when you get. You want to link? Can you link? Or if you can link that, it's too complicated. Too, too weird. Um, in the red family, we have flamingo, so that that yeah. soft, light purple. The ruby hummingbird is a real vibrant sort of um, raspberry red and golden pheasant. This was another really beautiful one as well. A little bit confusing because it's a red, but it is a <laughs> part of the golden pheasant. That, um, hmm. Yeah. Gosh. Isn't yeah. That so cool? spend some time yeah. <laughs> Googling the birds. It's just going to be fun. Then in the green family, we have that bright, bright green that I was mentioning, which I have a feather somewhere. I don't know where it is. Um, it might be sitting out there somewhere. And the green parrot, which is a vibrant green, and kingfisher, which is a really neat color. It's it's a teal. It has quite a bit of blue in it. This is probably the most variegated one. Mm -hmm. It has a lot of colors in it. And so the formula, you know what else I mm -hmm. should have is the wet felted. Oh, yeah. Um, is that in the back? Yeah, can, the can back you back? get that, Talbot? Okay, thank you. The formula. Okay. <laughs> okay, thank you. So Talbot is doing his very best to make this overhead, the color balance look good. And it look, does look yeah, good Yeah, representative actually. to each other. Mm -hmm. They're great, I mm -hmm. would say, I in person. It, it looks really good in person. Good. Every color looks just that much better. Yes, like, yes. Um, They're, yeah. Um, what was I gonna say? Oh, the formula is designed for the the feather technique, which I'm still trying to get as delicate as it should be, um, it does, it's a little, thank you, it has a little more, um, it's not the same as fur, although this color combo with the fur, natural colors of the fur line, you could blend, totally blend together in making your feathers. So that gives you infinite range. And I have blended some of these together and it's so cool. Like <laughs> we're gonna do that on the blending board. But um, just combos that you can't even need that. Talbot, can I ask you another favor? <laughs> Will you bring me that box? People are, um Asking about samplers. Oh, uh, we didn't go there yet. No. Nope. <laughs> oh my gosh. Ooh, like look at that. Oh, I'll remember what it is in a second. Here's an example of the rainbow lorikeet. Oh, okay. And here is an example of the, these are the two colors that are coming that we don't have yet. Ooh, those are nice. Yeah. I did make some blends and 
oh, like that's, this is a, that's a pretty one. I forget what that was. Someone said, are the feathers more alpaca and silk to reduce felting? Well, it does, it's not, these don't need to necessarily not felt. Not felt. Like fur. Um, like fur. So it has more, it has more wool in it than fur. Well, fur doesn't have any wool in it. Um, okay, I think that's a good start. Sorry, that was loud. Um, okay. We should give, oh, I need to be careful what I say. <laughs> this is two plumage colors blended together, this gray. So I would be curious if anyone could guess what two colors it is. Oh. Before we put oh, it on Oh, to here. make that? All right. Yeah. Start, start guessing. <laughs> Then there's this giant quiet yeah. while we're waiting for people to guess. Yes, we're going to wait. Yes, so Sabine just said um, that it does it wet felt. So I wanted to show... I, may, I did wet felt all of the colors. <laughs> um, and... It does wet felt really well, and it, it sort of behaves like you would imagine wool and, and silk mix do. So you get a little bit of that crinkle, a little bit of that shine. These aren't the best, it's not my best work, um, but you can see how they wet felt. We've, and got, this, we've got some guesses coming. And in. this was just on um, cloud, cloud. pre-felt, yeah. So first guess is brown and purple. Well, there isn't a brown, really. Then the next guess is purple and orange. Mm. Uh, heron and flamingo, someone said. Mm. Blue and orange. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Good. You guys are on the right lines. Um, this was made with heron and you pupa. Okay. Blue I don't know and if orange. I'm saying that right. It could ooh, be, poopa, ooh, papa. Papa. <laughs> This was... G. Griffin got it first, I yes. would say. Yes, awesome. This is, I believe, Resplendent Quetzal and... I don't remember, it was a long time ago. <laughs> and maybe this one. And this was an orange and a pink, I believe. Anyway, it just it just goes on and on. We disappear. Um, so Mary Marin asked about viscose. I I I don't use, you know, we don't carry it. I haven't I haven't succumbed to bamboo <laughs> for that reason. So I'll find out more about it. Um, but I don't have an answer on hand to that question. We disappeared. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, that uh, the front camera is not going. Okay. Battery. Should Battery Stick death. with us for one second. Oh, yeah, it just popped out. What do we need to do quick before the camera comes back on? Gravity got it, I guess. Uh-oh. What's that? Uh-oh, now we totally disappeared. <laughs> That's back on. So funny. It's good to see you guys so excited about the colors. They are really beautiful. Okay. Okay, I'm going to put these there we go. back in the bowl. No, no bags. 
sorry. The bag. <laughs> <laughs> it's just going to just be a second. <laughs> Let me munch on some chips while we're at it. <laughs> All righty. Blending board. <laughs> that was a clap, not a chop chop. <laughs> Sorry, right, I'm on it. Thank you. What are we? How's it going to look overhead? It's going to look amazing. All right. I'm waiting for my video to catch up so I can see where I am. And if you can get overhead back, Talbot, I'll show. <laughs> Do you think Stacy was talking about the um, plumage colors or us? What'd she say? <laughs> they are beautiful. <laughs> Thank you. We try extra <laughs> on live stream days. <laughs> She's possibly talking about the plumage, but whatever, we'll take it. Okay. This is the blending board. And... It comes with your a brush, which presses it all in, which I'll show. This is a mix that I made with Panther, um, Toreg Mulberry Silk, Cobalt Silk, Fur, Tussa, and the... Victoria Crowned Pigeon the dark purple and it would be great on for rooster tails Isn't that pretty? so pretty so pretty <clears throat> now the blending board is a lot of fun because uh, first of all well just because there's a lot you can do and because you are Kind of like interacting with your fiber which is you know sounds weird but we know we all love it <laughs> so mm -hmm. you guys get it mm -hmm. <laughs> um so i picked out a few colors to blend and this goes back to our our hummingbird wing question and to our little quiz and i actually did add a little um flamingo yeah. because I wanted to cool it off a little bit but I just I just find it so fascinating that like you know the use of um complementary colors and and what they do when they're next to each other and what they do when they're blended together and that comes from mixing colors for painting and this understanding is, all of that this is still fascinating to me that you get that blend with fiber yeah Cause like with paint I feel like it's liquid and it like right joins in or something but liquid but is just little molecules and and if you think about it like, like bigger look, bigger like that bigger is basically little molecules. like a fi fiber molecule yeah it's, so it's wild yeah now we can make things for spinning we can make things for wet felting we can blend colors for needle felting we can blend colors for all the other techniques that we're using you can leave it one pass and striated you can really blend as if you were using hand carters you can pull it off as a bat um you can pull it off as the roll eggs and um it's just it's a lot so of many good possibilities. and i prefer i mean i would prefer this to hand carters i think if i needed to make an ounce or two of something oh, yeah. and it's not as expensive as a drum carter, mm -hmm. um, which is really what I would really use. Yeah, but yeah. So if you wanted to make something like this, where you're just passing colors and like this, so this I would leave for the rooster tail as it is. I wouldn't, um, I wouldn't blend it again. I like getting the um, iridescence of a black tail what is everything okay tell that okay um by bouncing these other rich colors off of off of black so i would leave that as it is i did spend some time um like blending two sort of natural colors for a pelt and those 
I put on, took off, and then I put on again and took it off. And then your color, then your color is blended. So we'll show by using the complementary colors of per, of of blue and orange. Um, we'll show how this works. And now, if you were making an art bat, you might not put the same fiber top to bottom. You might plop things down mm -hmm. here and there. Um, uh, locks, all kinds of stuff. Locks, shiny we, stuff. We do have two videos linked on our listing um, that Ashford, who makes this, made. And um, Judy just said, I saw someone take finished blocks from a blending board and what felt them into a long scarf. Yes, so that, yes, that tutorial is, is shown um, on our listing for the blending board. It's and very cool. super cool that they got all felted together. Yeah. And so they show the finished product. It's really nice. So I'm not going to go like super detailed blending board today. Um, but for those of you who aren't familiar with it, I did just want to do a little demo. We have a lot in stock. So we've been waiting for these for ever a year longer. I don't know. It's yeah, been a long a time. Long time. Um, I believe we have 25. 25 to start. So we don't, it's, it's hard to know how many people are going to. If they're gone, we will definitely order them right away. It's one of the pricier things for us to buy. So, you know, we can't have a hundred in stock. Right, right. But, um, so hopefully that they have them again means that we don't have another long wait to restock them. Is the difference between hand carter and blending board just the surface size? Uh, no, I mean, it's two, it's all carding cloth, mm -hmm. but it's two different techniques with sort of the blending board has a way like more versatility. You could use a hand carter just like this. It's just smaller. Um, but with the hand carters, you have the two, um, you can work the two mm -hmm. against each other. It would, you know, you can't make a significant roll egg on a hand carter, mm -hmm. so. Or a bat, really. Or a bat. And then this seems to come off more aligned than Yes, hand yes, carding. that's the other thing. Hand carding, I feel like it's hard to keep the fiber all, um, aligned I end up I end up restacking it in my hands mm -hmm. to get it to get it aligned again so but yeah you could blend um, plumage colors for feathers like let's say so one of the ones that's in the picture <clears throat> on the listing is an ombre um, or just like a blend from the bright green into a dark blue so if you were gonna make a whole bunch of feathers for a bird that did that, you could blend it on here and then put your fiber into your plume palette and it's all blended, mm -hmm. you know, and you're you get, get a nice natural look to it. That's on the blending board. It's on the blending board picture. listing, yeah. You wanna link, I'll link, link that, the blending yeah. board up? But it's just fun. <laughs> It's fun. It feels good. <laughs> All right. You, I could keep going. Like, this is... You could probably get three or four more layers on here. But we'll see where we are. Well, I sh can maybe even just lift this off without rolling it if I'm going to blend it again. Mm -hmm. We do have um, a feather tutorial. If you look on our site under the plume palette, um, how to use that is linked. And let me double check. Although Sarah is wanting to do a feather. Yeah, I want to do it. I want to do a feather felt along. I want to show the macrame technique which is how I make the bigger feathers, which are really fun. I just, I just like making them um, for the sake of making them. You could mm -hmm. even do little like home decor type stuff with them. Um, 
I did just link the plume palette, but right in that listing, um, the feather tutorial is there. I worked on a peacock feather. I'm not sure where that is. Can you blend all kinds of wool, silk, fur, locks, core, yes. all yes. together? Yes. Oh, yeah, this would really help if you like doing landscapes. To oh get my your gosh, fiber. yeah. And in the tutorial now, I haven't played with it yet. But she puts it across, too. Mm -hmm. She puts it all kinds of ways. I'm keeping it aligned. Um, uh, the koala will be a felt along at the end of the month. It's on September 30th. It's a Saturday at 1 o'clock. And if you can't be there live for the felt along, it will post to our YouTube channel. So it essentially will be a tutorial in that in that sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it would make a great supply pack mm -hmm. and tutorial. So we'll we sometimes we put things out as a fiber fairy and then work on a supply pack afterwards. The fiber fairy is like the jump start. Because these are two very different colors, it would maybe take it's quite a bit a to blend them. But if you were blending sort of a gray and a brown, for example, it would maybe only be two passes. Um, and like I said, you could load this up a lot more so that when you pull this off, I haven't fully loaded it, but I imagine you could have, this has to be two ounces. And that's not even fully loaded. Yeah, maybe a little less, but... Yeah, maybe a little bit less. I don't have my brush, but I would... So you can start to see, like if you blur your eyes, <laughs> you can start to see the gray. I'm not gonna do too much more of this, but. Pretty cool. So that is the blending board. So much to do with this. We're just uh, getting your eyes on it today so that you can see. We just got it in stock yesterday mm -hmm. and wanted to have it available to you guys. Can you reach the chair or? Yeah. Okay. Um, we had another question about which colors were used in each of the koalas. So if we okay. maybe go overhead again, mm -hmm. we can show mm -hmm. that. We are, I think we are overhead. Yes. Oh, are yeah. we? Yeah. Duh. Here you go. I can see it right in front of my face. <laughs> um, the, I, I'm so, I really apologize. I thought I had all my papers here, but look up Northern and Southern Koala and I, I don't want to mix them up. I believe the Northern one is the gray one um, and the Southern one is the brown one. So I used the uh, BFL, the oatmeal BFL on the gray which is in the which is in the fiber fairy and the moret on the brown but like you could you know whatever fiber you have on hand or whatever else you want to put in your cart you could blend more colors together mm -hmm. this is just, just what we're just what we're giving away so they're, they're funny they do have a different look to them um the brown ones i believe are bigger and deep dive into koalas is fascinating their front hands have basically two thumbs and three fingers and then their hind feet have a thumb and then four digits but the first two digits are fused together but there's still two fingernails it's really weird 
<laughs> and you know their faces are so unique it's actually pretty simple to make them the steps are very straightforward so it'll make a great felt along and in the felt along even though we're going to make little hands and feet i am going to skip the wrapping i'll show the cold wax on the fingernails and then just we do a little wrapping but it's back farther to get the gray of their fingers um, just leaving the black tips as their as their fingernails so jan has a blending board and she has been sharing a lot because she's used oh, it a good, lot good. in the chat but she said to show them the underside okay. of the blending board oh good so, idea um back to the blending board so this has different um places that you can i forget the name of this put this i think keel i don't know why i want to yeah, say I that it's keel. and then so it'll have a different angle on the table but you could also loosen this and then i think i would actually prefer to work with it in my lap so then when you turn it over you have this um you know you can hold it steady between your legs with with this put that way so very cool good options mm -hmm. i put it in the middle um but if you put it uh, up higher it would have less angle and sit down a little lower thank you jan for your input and all of that yes she's used it a lot mm -hmm. okay we actually have a couple more things um, we created a blend using um, different core wool. So Chick Yellow was a dyed color. And since we're having trouble getting our dyeing done, we created a blend and have a, I think it's next to you. This? Uh, but both, yep. we're gonna need both of those. Have a Chick Yellow. And I, I can't remember if that actually went out of stock or if it was one of the ones that we were had enough of but this is in stock um a little bit different than the off-white chunky core type of wool but excellent core wool mm -hmm. nice soft color if you are making chicks or ducklings or anything that needs this color we do have that and then we updated or upgraded our white sheep curls with a Wensleydale Border Luster Cross. And we have plenty of these. And I want to show them because they're really pretty. You could go back on overhead. I'm not a fan of the double knot. <laughs> um, Joe was asking if does a, a drum carter work the same way as the blending board? So. Mm -hmm. It's faster. I mean, you, you know, it has the handle and you crank it through, so it's faster in that way. If it's the narrower drum carter, I'm guessing you can't do roll eggs the same way. So it's kind of like what you... Right. What's your end yeah. goal, yeah. really? So they're um, springy. They're relatively long, really, mm -hmm. four or five inches. And um, five inches, I'd say. And... Um, yeah, really nice getting that that mix between the the liveliness and crimp of the border luster with the curl definition and length of the Wensleydale. So nice, so nice. So these are they're in like stock. Cus they're like custom. They're so yes, they are custom. <laughs> That's yeah. exciting we asked that we have she, custom yes created locks. Yes. Oh my gosh, and then I just want to make all kinds of things now. I want to make nests. Oh, you know what would be fun? Would be do nests with like little feathers sticking out of it. Mm. <laughs> so we have lots to do. We need to revisit the feather technique. We need to introduce, we should revisit the blending boards mm -hmm. and get back to the drop spindle, um, projects with the drop spindle from the blending board and we've got a koala felt along we're gonna have a big fiber fairy in october lots doing <laughs> um, someone uh -oh. said are those sold out are the white lock they shouldn't be there should be i thought there was a lot 
We mm-hmm. Kyla's gonna check on that. Okay, good. I will link them. So I made it through my list. That so now, 11. so now it's just time to chit chat. <laughs> Can you do a spin in the parking lot next spring? Like, like spin around, like spin. <laughs> just go out there and spin like around. Spin out with her car. <laughs> like a, a spin time. Like hang out in the but parking why lot. Why are we in the parking lot? It's our our spot is so sunny. Mm-hmm. There's no shade. It just this building gets beat upon but we if we can we i'm game i don't know maybe she'll explain further can you please go over using rewards so you need to have an account on the site to be able to um access your rewards although they kind of keep changing things (laughs) so i feel like it works a little different differently than when i first figured out how all of it works but when you're on the website there's a green whether you're on a phone or an ipad or a computer um, somewhere near the bottom is a green button. It's a rectangle, oval kind of, um, that says Serafina Rewards. And if you click into that, it'll pop up. If you're not logged in, it'll prompt you to log in. Um, Once that pops up, if you are logged in, the points that you have should be up at the top. And you can click into, I think they give you like a suggested discount that you can use if it's 10 percent off so you can click directly on that but you can also click on ways to redeem and when you click into that then you'll have different options of if you have 500 points you can get um free shipping i think that's free shipping 10 percent off you can also do for every 100 points a five dollar reward and it's a little different how they did that there's like a slider now instead of putting okay. in your numbers of points but it's pretty Why does it's the pretty internet user friendly i don't know it's pretty user friendly <laughs> if you um click into it and if anything happens and you're in like a panic because you put it in for the wrong thing it has happened to a couple people and they've inadvertently exchanged them um just email admin at seraphina fiber art and i have access to the back end so i can i can help you out there uh, the spin in the parking lot. It's what you call a group of spinning wheels and spinners who get together and spin. Okay, it oh, would have okay. to be a really nice day because of the sun <laughs> in the parking lot. I used to have spin night here when we first opened. That was really fun. And so everyone would the just spin come night. and spin. Yep. Yeah, I have I have spinning wheels. I have one here. I have one in my house. I have bags of fiber like out next to it. <laughs> How often do I do it? <laughs> but Not you're ready. Often. I'm ready. You're ready. Um... Delisa said on the roller skates. We do spin in the parking lot on roller skates oh every now and again. Not well. Um, free shipping. For the free shipping works up to $25 value. So for Canada, depending on what you're getting, it'd be, it'd be right around there. Depending on where you live, that is the better discount. You can kind of work out what's best. Can rewards points be used for the fiber ferry? I forget how it shows up on the invoice. Typically, the way we count discounts, that's like a coupon. So you want to make sure after any discounts, your total is the total for the It can be tiers. used, but it's, yes, your total is less the discount right. than before shipping. Which so just used to be different. On our old site, rewards turned into gift certificates, and gift certificates were payment, and... It, yeah it's again shifts so um somebody asked about are the points can you use that towards a blending board any item on the website um rewards can be cashed in against that if you do the five dollars for 100 points you want to grab those gnomes i'm just looking at our live stream and it's a i'm just noticing how um we have a lot going on here this morning. Oh <laughs> like usually we have a little bit of like a color scheme or like and I was just looking at it, I was like wow there's there, there's a lot going on but that's that's definitely indicative of of what is happening. happening here yes 
So these were made by Lee and Pam Alsdorf. If you want to go overhead, Talbot, I will show these off. <coughs> and I just realized this feather is another, this is a color blend, mm. I think. Yep. Is it this one or is it? Oh no, this is resplendent. I did blend, I did make a feather. This one? Sorry. No, no. I think she's holding it. I can't reach it, it's okay. Uh, this one was made by Lee. <laughs> and he has a wet felted tunic and a wonderful Lee face. And this super cute little hat. And he's taller than our our traditional Port Vliet gnomes. He has great hands. And Pam Alsdorf made this. I think she's, I wanna say she's PJ. I'm, I'm blanking on Pam's. Pam, if you're on there and wanna uh, remind us what you're, page is called so yes he's very sweet I think um, maybe he's needle felted and look at his little fur vest <laughs> so cute um, is the macrame technique in a tutorial someone did ask about that we have not I have not shared the macrame we have not done the macrame technique technique um <laughs> And it requires a waxed thread, which we will either um, probably not carry, we'll probably link up. Um, but yeah, it's a lot of fun. I find it a little more relaxing than twisting the wire. I, I like the process of it, um, but it does, it is really for bigger feathers. You can't do it tiny. So just a, just a different way. And when I do get into that, um, Talbot, could I ask you to pass me the, I think there's a peacock feather. I, I did some peacock feathers a while ago and they were pretty good and this one's not as good, but um, just bring me that whole thing because I'm gonna end up asking you to get up again probably if I don't. Thank you so much. So these are all larger. This one's like a pheasant where I left, I left the tips a pointy. Um, this one's just gigantic. I think this is platinum and Arctic and wolf. Oh, you're tip, tap, typing yeah. away over there. And what's cool about the macrame technique is it makes a little bit of a, um, of a spine which the wires don't. This, I don't even know what that is. I just was having a good time with that. And I will, before we have the tutorial, work on, um, oh. that's just another big old thing. So pretty though, I love these. So someone asks, do you still earn points with the leftovers after using your rewards? Before when you used a gift certificate or a discount, the rewards, it, the whole order didn't count. So if you use $5, but you spent 200, you didn't get points. You're not getting on the points on the day I that you think, use. I think it deducts that from the balance. And I do think you get points after. Oh. I will investigate, but um, the new system has shifted a little bit, okay. the app. And then they changed the app, so. Um, there's another question. We won't give hints for October's Fiber Fairy. Someone said they know that, but how much money do they need to stash away? <laughs> uh, okay, all right. I'll, I'll get to that in one second. Okay. Um, and then I, I busted this out, but I'm going to do better um, on that. And this is using the new, the new plumage colors. So I will show how to mix some, you know, mix some layers up in your feather to get some different different possibilities but uh, yeah so um 
when we do the big fiber fairies, I would say in general, they land in the 100 to 135. Well, 100 Sometimes to 150. 150. That's um, usually for That's a when you're going to get the raffle, mm -hmm. uh, the raffle um, chance at the raffle. So there are a few questions about wet felting. Someone said any thoughts on wet felting, wet felted onto wet felted. They mm -hmm. asked about like the giraffe spots and then mm -hmm. any experience wet felting straight onto standing sculptures with the wire armature mm -hmm. what only using water a steam air, iron and drying in the sun mm. okay that would be interesting um wet felting onto wet felting is tricky because once the fiber is felted it doesn't have a lot of reception to to so once that first layer is felted it's not going to want to felt to anything else so if you were doing a giraffe Pelt. I think we spoke in the shop hop. Uh, Jonathan was talking about wet felting a color for spots. He would need to do that very loosely, and then um, even rough up the under. And then rough it up, or yeah, to get it to felt together. A better option might be to needle felt. So using pre felt works really well. Um, but even the pre felt, you need to either stab together or or tease, um, tease some wool apart. And then I think way long time ago, I might have tried to wet felt something that was already sculpted. I can't remember what I was doing or why, but it is not anything that I've done since then or that I felt like I had any success with. Um, I don't know that I don't think that steam will really felt something maybe an extreme hot and cold situation would but it seems to take the combination of water and detergent and agitation to really wet felt something so I, I can't really answer that I haven't had a ton of experience with that but that's what's so exciting about this is there's tons to explore you know and and learn about and sort of forge ahead into new territory so jan described it as felt it just to the point where it will barely hold together mm -hmm. <laughs> so mm -hmm. yeah that makes sense uh the paid courses are a separate website and like nothing shipped <clears throat> excuse me shipped or delivered or anything and um the fiber fairy goes into the physical package that we're shipping out to you. So the paid courses do not count for fiber fairy. Um, I don't think we missed any. Okay. <laughs> The color balance does look very good, Talbot. Yeah, the wall looks nicer. It doesn't look as did. <laughs> uh, Beth uh, Ann is asking about the custom white locks. Yeah, that's um, light sheep curls. So I, we've carried those all along, but we changed what they are, basically, what I just, they look like. I just linked them again in the good. comments. Good. Yeah, I'm excited to see you guys for the felt along. It's, um, you know, we found during the pandemic, we were doing really just hanging out and felting together things that we had already made. Um, what did I realize we hadn't done recently? I was like, oh, we haven't done that in forever. We didn't do tipple toppers. Oh, on a felt along. Yeah. Yeah, we were thinking about doing that closer to the holidays oh yeah that so that was fun. that would be a lot of fun to do the bottle toppers um, for closer to mm -hmm. thanksgiving and christmas um i would like that so but you know as we're combining them with fiber fairies and the felt alongs evolved the projects are getting a little more complex so 
you can just hang out, watch, absorb, participate, comment, and then the video exists to actually make the project um, at uh, any time, convenient time for you. So um, I think some, like, I feel like it's starting to sort of, sort of half the people were felting and half mm -hmm. were just listening. And then sometimes people who are felting are like, oh, I'm just gonna wait <laughs> and do this later. Um, so basically it's like a live, demo right kind of right yeah but when we if we do something like nests or people can work together even if we do the feathers like you can work together because there's yeah. not a lot of tons of explanation it's just, it's more sort of busy work um so oh someone did ask about the woolly pines i just emailed um the woolly pine kit creators someone else asked this morning about that and they they get them done when they can between I think teaching some in-person classes it's um pretty much one person now I think making yeah. all of them and they pretty much sound like that yeah when she gets them done so <laughs> um I mean there is the new tree mm -hmm. series that that we introduced that it, it's not exactly the same obviously but mm -hmm. really cool way to create a tree and we have um the green yarn mm -hmm. now mm -hmm. so you could make a pine look that way did you see the nice big tree <clears throat> on fanfare no i forget who it is she said it was like 48 inches or oh something. get out yeah it was really cool oh, that's cool i love the tree i love the tree tutorial and what i love that the tree tutorial is an extension of the feather mm -hmm. technique mm -hmm. so it just it all all goes together and um I could see making a wreath using mm -hmm. these techniques. So many possibilities. A this is why wreath. I can't keep up with our own selves. And what about a feather wreath? Yeah, a feather wreath would be cool. That's a lot of feathers. That's a lot of feathers. Lot of feathers. <laughs> um, yes, we do have more plans for 2D in the future. I told myself that I was going to get that 2d hair done this fall <laughs> um that would be a kit and tutorial so i there i said it out loud and um we will make it happen so <sighs> that sigh was for um my boys left <laughs> so i haven't seen you guys in a while and um so i'm having a little more a sort of space and free time they were with me full time and both just went to montana where they're going to the university of montana so um so anyway that's just a little little update and they're far they're far and yeah it was a busy summer getting having them around and getting them ready to go and um so yeah i feel a little bit liberated for sure so i'm excited for everything that we have coming up um and i should be on track to if anyone is interested in blankets or um checking out Cosset and lock i think i'm on track for the end of the month so i'm really excited about that oh. as well and we've been working hard on that and it's <laughs> Is it quite, uh, there's just piles of blankets everywhere and figuring out packaging and figuring out that website. So it's going to be a very rich fall and, um, but definitely full of, of good stuff for us to do together. So we've had some beautiful emails lately, which is so nice and, um, sort of feeds our fuels us for more like felting, felting stuff, so. Mm -hmm. um, classes for making blankets. Um, I don't plan on teaching the blankets. It, um, don't know yet, but I don't plan on it right now. It requires a lot, so. Um, but. <laughs> All right, anything else? Not. No, no. All right, we're gonna get to shipping. We're I gonna, promised. We're I promised to, to show it. the dog. Someone, someone.
on oh, the message. Oh, okay. Thing. So All right. I said well, when we signed off. I yes, say, hey. absolutely. Come on. <laughs> she's going to get too big for you to do that. No. <laughs> She's like, what's on this table that I can, <laughs> what, what can I eat? <laughs> like Sarah's dachshund, which was an unfortunate incident. Did you eat it? <laughs> you chew him just, up. Just a little bit. <laughs> All right. Thanks, you guys. Thank you, everybody.